North Korea's Kim Jong-un rolled through Russia on an armored train Tuesday toward a meeting with President Vladimir Putin, a rare encounter between isolated leaders driven together by their need for support in escalating standoffs with the West. Kim is expected to seek economic aid and military technology for his impoverished country, and, in a twist, appears to have something Putin desperately needs. Munitions for Russia's grueling war in Ukraine. It's a chance for the North Korean leader to get around crippling UN sanctions and years of diplomatic isolation. For Putin, it's an opportunity to refill ammunition stores that the war has drained. Any arms deal with North Korea would violate the sanctions, which Russia supported in the past. Kim's personal train stopped in Kasan, a station on the Russia-North Korea border, where it was met by a military honor guard and a brass band, according to video posted on social media channels. He was met on a red carpet by regional governor Oleg Kozhimyako and natural resources minister Alexander Kozlov, their channels said. Kim's final destination is uncertain. Many had assumed he and Putin would meet in Vladivostok, a Russian city close to the border where the two leaders had their last meeting in 2019, and which Putin is visiting this week for an economic forum. But Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov confirmed only that Kim has entered Russia, and state news agency RIA Novosti later reported his train had headed north after crossing the Razdolnaya River, taking it away from Vladivostok. The South Korean news agency Yonhap later published a photo it said showed the train in Usarisk, a city about 40 miles north of Vladivostok that has a sizable ethnic Korean population. Some Russian news media speculate he is headed for the Vostochny spaceport, which Putin is to visit soon. At the forum, Putin declined to say what he intended to do there. The launch facility is about 550 miles northwest of Usarisk, but the route there is circuitous and it is unclear how long Kim's slow-moving train would take to reach it. Peskov said Putin and Kim will meet after the Vladivostok forum, and that the meeting would include a lunch in Kim's honor. North Korea's official Korean Central News Agency said Kim left Pyongyang on his train Sunday, accompanied by members of the ruling party, government and military. Officials identified in North Korean state media photos could hint at what Kim might seek from Putin and what he would be willing to give. Kim is apparently accompanied by Jo chun Ryong, a ruling party official in charge of munitions policies who joined him on recent tours of factories producing artillery shells and missiles, according to South Korea's Unification Ministry. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shigu will be part of the Russian delegation, Peskov said. North Korea may have tens of millions of aging artillery shells and rockets based on Soviet designs that could give a huge boost to the Russian army in Ukraine, analysts say. Also identified in photos were Pak Thaesong, chairman of North Korea's Space Science and Technology Committee, and Navy Admiral. Kim Yong-sik, who are linked with North Korean efforts to acquire spy satellites and nuclear-capable ballistic missile submarines. Experts say North Korea would struggle to acquire such capabilities without external help, although it's not clear if Russia would share such sensitive technology. Kim Jong-un may also seek badly needed energy and food supplies, analysts say. Deputy Foreign Minister Andrei Rodenko said Russia may discuss humanitarian aid with the North Korean delegation, according to Russian news agencies. Kim's delegation also likely includes Foreign Minister Cho Sun-wei and his top two military officials, Korean People's Army Marshals Ri Pyong-chul and Pak jong chan Data from Flight Radar 24.com, which tracks flights worldwide, showed an Air Corio AN-148 took off from Pyongyang on Tuesday and flew to Vladivostok. North Korea's national airline has only just resumed flying internationally after being grounded during the COVID-19 pandemic. There had been speculation that North Korea could use a plane to fly and support staff. Kim is making his first foreign trip since the pandemic, during which North Korea imposed tight border controls for more than three years. After decades of hot and cold relations, Russia and North Korea have drawn closer since Moscow's invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Lim Su-suk, South Korea's foreign ministry spokesperson, said Seoul was maintaining communication with Moscow while closely monitoring Kim's visit. No UN member state should violate Security Council sanctions against North Korea by engaging in an illegal trade of arms, and must certainly not engage in military cooperation with North Korea that undermines the peace and stability of the international community, Lim said at a briefing. U.S. officials released intelligence last week that North Korea and Russia were arranging the summit. According to U.S. officials, Putin could focus on securing more supplies of North Korean artillery and other ammunition to refill arsenals as Moscow seeks to rebuff a Ukrainian counteroffensive and show that he's capable of grinding out a long war of attrition. That could potentially put more pressure on the U.S. and its partners to pursue negotiations as concerns over a protracted conflict grow despite their huge shipments of advanced weaponry to Ukraine in the last 17 months. We urge the DPRK to abide by the public commitments that Pyongyang has made to not provide or sell arms to Russia, 
said White House National Security Council spokesperson Adrian Watson, using the abbreviation for North Korea's official name of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller reminded both countries that any transfer of arms from North Korea to Russia would be a violation of multiple UN Security Council resolutions, and that the U.S. will not hesitate to impose new sanctions. Japan's chief cabinet secretary Hirokazu Mitsuno told reporters that Tokyo will be watching the Kim Putin meeting with concern, including the impact it could have on Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The United States has accused North Korea of providing Russia with arms, including selling artillery shells to the Russian mercenary group Wagner. Both Russian and North Korean officials denied such claims. But speculation about their military cooperation grew after Shaigu, the defense minister, visited North Korea in July, when Kim invited him to an arms exhibition and a massive military parade in the capital showcasing ICBMs designed to target the U.S. mainland. Following that visit, Kim toured North Korea's weapons factories, including a facility producing artillery systems, urging workers to speed up development and large-scale production of new kinds of ammunition. Experts say Kim's visits to the factories likely had a dual goal of encouraging the modernization of North Korean weaponry and examining artillery and other supplies that could be exported to Russia.